this summer has for the first time seen the emergence of admitted hoaxers into the open. Doug Bauer and Dave Chorley were discovered by Today newspaper. They claim to have invented the whole phenomenon in 1978 and they've made contradictory claims to varying numbers of circles. Others began hoaxing for the first time this year. A group of physicists from Southampton University, calling themselves the Wessex Skeptics, set out this summer to show how easy it was to make a crop circle. Um, we were struck last year, 19, which was 1990, of course, there were an enormous number of pictograms and uh, we found it very difficult to believe that those were produced by a natural phenomenon. It doesn't mean we were right, we just found it very difficult to believe. Now, given that we were told that the structure of the pictograms, the, the, the way the crop was laid out, was laid down in the pictogram, you know, the detailed way in which it fell, was identical to the simple circles. We, of course, were led to the conclusion if the pictograms were not a natural phenomenon, then there was no reason to suppose the circles were either. The Wessex skeptics attracted the opposition of both Meaden and CCCS, who accused them of interfering with their attempts to solve this mystery. I consider these hoaxes a complete waste of time. It costs a lot of people a lot of money, photography, flying aircraft, and of course, time is the essence of our research. CCCS has been set up to solve the problems of the corn circle in the sense that we will look into the hoaxing problem and we will find ways of beating it. Actually, we suspect you of hoaxing other circles. There have been so many done this year. Mm. We know you've made some, and we suspect you've made others you've not told us about. Mm. You've seen the ones we've made. We made them in Chris Cutler's farm. I assume you've been there, or somebody in yes, one of your group been has there. been there. Our point you is that, that, that you've made others too. You have created, that you've given us. Well, do you you are now giving us criteria. But have you made can... any or not? Yes, other we've made than, circles. Other than the ones at Chris Cutler's farm and these. Have I made any other than those? Yes, I've made, made some. Yes. Uh -huh. well, well, I won't. However, we better have a the list. point that's is, we are, now learning, we are now learning We're how to hoax some better. We're suggesting that you are the hoaxer, so in some cases. Thing to do. <laughs> We're stuck in Southampton. We have yet. very little time no, to come No, look, you admit you make circles. We've that's never made any ourselves. We're well, finding well, them. Maybe you should try to make them. Maybe you should try to make them. We found some hoax circles. We think you've made more than you've told us about. Don't you think you should try to make some and see whether you can duplicate the effects you think you see? But the skeptics persist. They believe creating circles is a good way of testing the validity of the rival theories. If the theory is good in their view, it ought to be able to distinguish a naturally created circle from a man-made one. Equinox filmed them making a circle in a field belonging to an organic farm run by Martin Pitt, just outside Marlborough. They created one main circle with three satellite circles placed away from the tractor tram lines. That circle was extremely ambitious in the, in the sense that we decided to make one fairly large. We decided to make one that would look as though it was made by a plasma vortex. We had all sorts of fancy stuff, quite a lot of organisation and we started designing it a couple of days before. Then things started to go wrong when we first came into the field and realised that our original site, rather ironically, was wrecked by wind damage, so we had to move to a different site. We had to redesign it and we had to reassign roles at very short notice. So there was a certain amount of chaos when we went into the field, but the surveying uh, was fairly successful. And we, we then just reverted to a very crude technique of rolling uh, and trampling, just to actually produce something that might look good from the air, but we don't really know. Six days later, the hoax was discovered independently. A field officer from the Centre for Crop Circle Studies, Busty Taylor, doused it to find out if it was genuine, and then he gave his opinion. But, uh, we have a really complex one here, and it's absolutely amazing what this is telling us here. We have the opposite rotation, which we had in 1989. We have the quarter sections appearing, the petal sections appearing, it's really a cracker. Terence Meaden also discovered its existence independently, and he too verified it. The circle formation on Martin Pitt's land consists of, of simple round circles, which pleased me very much to see, 
because they were so typical of the ones I've been looking at all these years. They didn't have those complex, strange shapes which so many other systems have had uh, this year and last year. But in detail, they had a lot of um, complex structure, um, a kind of petal effect, a braiding, a plaiting, and a layering, which showed the uh, difficulty that any hoaxer would have to manage to contrive to follow if he wished to copy it. In fact, it was a system that was too hard to copy, and yet was of the simple variety nevertheless. Genuine in every way. Admittedly, the Wessex skeptics were able to make their circle with the permission of the farmer, who cleared away damning evidence of human involvement, like two forgotten balls of string. So they haven't quite proved their case about how easy it is to make the circles and convince experts of their authenticity. In any event, neither dupers nor duped attach too much significance to the success of this particular hoax. So you are telling me that the circles on Martin Pitt's farm are hoax circles made by the Wessex skeptics. I have to admit that some people at least, if they are scientifically trained, are capable of perpetrating at least one hoax. That does not, however, negate all the positive evidence which has been gathered over the last 10 years in favor of genuine circles. When a scientific theory is complete, then it would be possible to distinguish between hoax circles and genuine circles. But we are not yet quite at that stage. The theory is undergoing development and modification according to the incoming data. Well, owing to the fact that we are producing books with photography showing the lay of the corn, it would be possible for individuals to go out and recreate circles. It, is, it isn't off the cards, it's on the cards. That is highly possible, but not all of them. No way, too many. 750 in Beckhampton last year, that's a lot of work all night. Worldwide, how do they do that? It's just one of those things that you will get people doing daft things. I regret it, the farmers definitely regret it, and I just wish they'd come to their senses and realize it is a waste of time. Unfortunately, the hoax hypothesis suffers from, from, from a weakness that the plasma vortex theory doesn't suffer from. The, plasma, the people who propose that don't claim that all circles are caused by plasma vortices, so they don't have to go out and select every single circle and prove it. Now, there's no way we can prove that every circle has been made by hoaxes, of course not. Um, we can simply throw doubt or, or examine the ability of the people who claim to be able to distinguish classes of patterns and say one is artificial and one is natural, we can test that ability. Of course, that's a very difficult test to do. In principle, it can be done. That won't prove that they're, that they're natural or, or artificial. After all, it's, no, it's quite possible that people may be able to simulate what is also a natural phenomenon. Isn't it? There's no reason why they can't, in principle, do that. All sides are still assessing the implications of a summer of hoaxing. The case for all circles being hoaxes is still not proven. If hoaxes are making all the circles, they've been working quietly and consistently for over a decade. They've remained undetected despite nights like the 16th of July this year, when in Wiltshire alone three massive formations were made. So the cognoscenti of the circles remain convinced that they can't all be hoaxes. The degree of organisation and mentality required is for them beyond belief. Nor does the hoax theory account for eyewitness reports of circles being formed, although anecdotal evidence is always open to doubt. So all sides are still working on their theories as the battleground turns to bread. <laughs>